Hey guys, in this video we're going to be doing the uh, new stack style conversion on the Dietone GTR90. Uh, as you saw in my uh, GTM3 review, they've gone to a new uh, way of mounting the flight stack here. And they've put the foreign EC on the bottom instead of the video transmitter, and they moved the video transmitter up to the top. And so you're going to need a bunch of new parts here to mount the uh, system this way. This is actually more a more traditional mounting system uh, with the 400 EC on the bottom. Uh, when they came out with the GTR90, um, they put the video transmitter on the bottom with this sort of 3D printed plastic cage and that has some issues and crashes it would break and in fact I broke a few of those myself. And so this design, while kind of uh, innovative, was ultimately proven to be not very effective. So that's why they would come to the newer, more traditional design with the video transfer back on top. So they sent me their little kit here to do the conversion. It comes with all the parts to uh, change the stack over. And um, I think this is two bucks, $1.99 on the uh, diatone.hk website. So if you want to do the conversion, you can do that. They also sell the capacitor, uh, solid capacitor, that's going to, also going to be on the version 2. Uh, that uh, this, you have to solder to the 5 volt line to clean up the uh, video noise from the TBS Unify. So I know a lot of these people had issues with the TBS Unify being kind of too noisy in terms of video noise. Supposedly the solid capacitor will clean up that noise. So um, it should be fairly straightforward in terms of making the change. I would recommend taking the four screws here that, that hold the top cage on. Take those out and then the top cage will come off and you'll have access to the entire stack. You want to disconnect the camera, of course. And uh, then you just want to unscrew uh, the screws that go into the cage and then basically take the whole thing apart. Um, I don't believe you're going to need to desolder anything, but I'll uh, go ahead, I'll start taking this apart and I'll show you what it looks like apart. And then we'll go ahead and put it back together to make it look like the new stack style in the, in the Dytone GTM3. Okay, so at this point I've removed those four screws that hold the top cage on, and see that's loose here on the side. I didn't really remove it completely because you can see the XD30 connector goes through here, so I'm just going to leave it dangling along with the receiver antenna. I can put this back. Uh, I can just leave it at that. That should be fine. Hopefully I don't have to take all that apart. Uh, so and then I removed the four screws from the cage that hold the cage on, so that cage should be able to come off, and then I removed the four nuts here that hold the flight controller on, and so now this whole thing should just come right apart. And the flight controller should slide up. You have to be careful of these connections here that goes to the uh, TBS Unify. Um, yeah, you don't want to break those. And it should go off to the side. And these connections here goes to the 401 EC. And you have these spacers. You can get rid of those. So getting the 401 EC is going to be limited by these little. Um, Holders here, so you probably need to snap these off of the arm. See, I think it goes through, yeah, that goes through the wires or so. You can't get this off unless you desolder the wires, which I don't want to do. Okay, so I think at this point I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the flight controller from the 401 EC. Okay, so at this point I want to get the Unify out of here, so I'm going to disconnect the uh, video transmitter antenna. There's a small little tab here you have to slide down if you want to get the uh, TBS Unify out of there. Okay, 
There we go. I'm actually going to disconnect the cable here from the TBS Unify. I'll make things a little bit easier. So I can get it out without that. I can get the Unify out without disconnecting it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now, I just need to free the foreman AC from the cage, and then the cage will be gone. Yeah, to actually make this easier, you know, you might want it to just unscrew a couple motors. I'm being a little stubborn here, and I'm going to see if I can, I'm almost there. So I'm going to try and get it out without having to do that. There we go. And there's the cage out of there. Obviously, if you're replacing this, some, some of you guys will have these it might be broken already, so actually it might be easier to remove it versus one that's intact. So I was able to uh, get everything disconnected without desoldering, as you can see here. And now we're going to go ahead and assemble the new stack. Really, the, the whole system is going to be this long screw that's going to go un from underneath. And then uh, there's going to be one small nut that holds everything together. Right there, and then that nut's going to go into this little plate. The TBS Unify is going to sit on top of this plate with some double-sided foam tape. And then you want to put the nuts inside this plate here, then the screws will come in from underneath and you can tighten it up from the bottom. Okay, so I'm obviously not completely finished here, but I just want to show you how to actually mount this. It's not the same way that it is on the, um, the GTM3 here. I tried to do that and it's too short on the bottom here because there's this uh, little mounting aluminum plate to mount the top cage to the bottom plate. And so you're going to need three of the big spacers here to create enough space so that that ESC connector doesn't get in the way. And you can see it just it touches the the frame there at the um, this aluminum, red aluminum piece right there. And it doesn't, it's really hard to see. It's, it's touching right there. So you're going to want to use three of the bigger spacers. And between the uh, 401 AC and the flight controller, I used uh, two of the smaller spacers, and then I have them kind of stacked like that, where the little grommet or the, the notches are, are butted up against each other to create a little more space. And uh, the reason I did this is oh, uh, the kit that I got only had 15 of the bigger spacers, and I think they meant to give you 16 so that you can use one more bigger spacer up here. I think you need a little bit more space between the 401 AC and the flight controller, but uh, I think it'll it'll be okay. There's space to reach for the little um, uh, vibration dampener there as well. And then I have enough space there on top for my receiver. So uh, that's generally how it's going to come together. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick the uh, capacitor on. It goes on to the 5 volt line here in the back of the flight controller. I'm going to so so solder that on and then I'll go ahead and I'll finish putting this all together and clean it up. And I'll show you what the final uh, assembly looks like. Okay, so I finally put everything back together, and this is what the final assembly looks like. I can see the capacitor is soldered on. I'll put a little picture of here of what it should look like. And it fits nicely behind the flex controller, and I don't think it's butting up against this little plastic piece here, but it looks like it's it's in a fairly, fairly safe place. I don't think it's going to get knocked off, or it's not in any danger of getting knocked off in here inside the cage. So that's actually a pretty good placement, but you got to cut those legs uh, pretty short to get it right up to the, uh, right up against the flight controller. Otherwise, uh, if it's too long, you're going to have problems fitting it in behind this uh, plastic piece here. But I think that amount is probably the right length. And I didn't have to do any other soldering other than uh, solder on the capacitor. I just, without desoldering anything, it does require a lot of fiddling around to sort of move the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle around, but uh, yeah, in the, in the end it, it was it is possible to swap the cage out and move all the parts around and get this in there. So again, yeah, three of the bigger spacers on the bottom here between the uh, main plate and the flight, I'm sorry, the foreign ESC, and two of the smaller ones here between the foreign ESC and the flight controller, and then you have the top plate here, a little plastic piece for the 
uh, TVS Unify, and I have just a, a thin piece of foam tape there that holds the Unify to that plastic piece because the bottom of the Unify is flat. And then I have my uh, receiver foam tape to the top of the uh, Unify, and then I, I reattached my uh, UFL connector for the uh, dipole antenna, and then I just have that secured here on the back of the cage so it doesn't get into the props. But this is what the final assembly should look like. I'm going to have a separate video on the video noise issue because that's uh, going to attract a lot of attention and I'll have a um, flight demo of this with the, the version 2 props. They're using the uh, Gemfan 1940 props for whatever reason I think because they want a little more clearance instead of using the, the, the 2040s. So I'm going to be using that in the flight demo so if you're curious about that I'll have a future video on that. But this is how you would do the swap and I think this is uh, going to be more durable in the long run uh, versus that plastic cage that broke a lot and crashes and stuff. But we'll see. We'll see how many times I crash and this holds up. Um, maybe they should have used a steel M2 screw instead of a nylon screw here but um, I guess we'll find out down the road. Anyway guys, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions about this, uh, let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.